Welcome to IDF TV. My name is Frank Impfius and I'm from the Oracle JDevelop and ADF product management team. In this session, we talk about customization and personalization, but we talk about seeded customization. And seeded customization is what the developer wants or anticipates and implements as a change to an application based on some conditions. Now you can imagine, for instance, that there are some conditions, maybe a different region where the application is accessed from or installed into that require you to have additional attributes or fields that you need to display for some sort of government regulation. Or you want to support more advanced users of your application with a type ahead interface. So remove all of the list of values and everything that a beginner would appreciate to have in an application. Or you want to change the order in which items show on a form simply by drag and drop. Now this and the persistence across applications is all about seeded customization with Oracle MDS. Before we go into the details on how you do this, there's something very important to consider when implementing customization. Because I can hear you already saying, well, I can put a lot of if-else statement into my code. Yes, but there are some criteria that you want to make sure your application fulfills so that it's maintainable. First of all, all customization should not impact the base application, the so base code line. That should not be blurred by any kind of customization code. You also want to be able to update or uh, implement new versions of your customization layer without impacting the application. You want to have it easy to manage, maybe to export some of your configurations uh, that you applied there. You want to make sure that the whole customization is performant and scalable and you want to make sure that customization can be applied conditionally. So you see that there are a lot of things to consider beyond of just the technical aspect which is that you switch the view of a user interface or the behavior of a task flow. Of course I wouldn't show you the slide if metadata services in Oracle IDF wouldn't be able to fulfill all of these requirements here. So let's have a look at the implementation detail here. Now every customization is applied to a layer and every layer is represented by a Java object. So the order of layers determines which of the customization applied to a layer is visible in an Oracle ADF application. And then, and I mentioned this in the first recording, personalization, which is the customization applied by the user is always added on top so you never lose personalization. However, with this layered approach you have the benefit to first of all conditionally apply customization, remove customization or even maintain customization. Now what you would do for instance is if you have an application that is a sales application you might have a manager role. Now managers could be a separate layer you may have a role which is the sales representative in America. So that could become a role as well and a layer. On this slide here, we see a graphic representation of what that means. You see a group representation and you see individual customization. Now this individual customization could also be role-based customization. So a group-based customization, now that could be a region. Yeah, all of the sales representative in a specific region on the world needs to have a specific look and feel, specific user interface or additional attributes or uh, specific navigation within your application. Now this all can be customized through metadata and can be anticipated by the developer. Then individual customization, now that could be the time of the day that you have. If you're accessing application out of office time, you may want to hide some of the sensitive data as you would assume that most likely the employee or whoever is accessing the application accesses it from outside the um, office. Or if you can tell if the access is from within the office, you might want to show more information, more sensitive information as you would if the access comes from outside of the company. Now if we look at the um, creation of customizable application in ADF, then it all starts with a base application. And I mentioned that layers are Java objects, so that's the next thing that you need to build. So you build a Java object and it's all well documented in the Oracle documentation, explain to you which class you need to extend and then how you configure your class to be 
read at runtime. Now, this Java object will just tell whether or not a specific string which represents the layer name will be applied to a running application. It's not only applied to the running application, it's re-evaluated per page request so that you have a flexibility to even at runtime uh, disable customization, maybe for customization um, QA purposes or for support purposes. Now you can do that because all that you can think, if you can think it in Java, you can make it work with customization in MDS. Now all of the customization settings, all layers do have cache hints. Now cache hints, and we'll learn about this in the next recording where I talk about MDS infrastructures. Now the cache hints will determine how long a specific change will be kept in the cache so that subsequent requests don't need to pull the information from the database which might take some extra time here. So to avoid the extra time, caching is something that you can configure. And you don't configure it by the time in seconds or milliseconds. You just tell it on a broad level, is that information shared on a, in a group? That means keep it longer in the cache or if it's just an individual caching, in which case it should be removed uh, quickly. And then the Configuration for customization happens in the ADF config, and you can do this declaratively in JDeveloper. Just double click on that file, and there's a dialog opens up that asks you for the customization class. Some of the customization classes are provided, like user CC, that goes well in line with Oracle ADF security, so it will represent the authenticated user. And there's also another class, role CC, that you can use to say, okay, this customization should apply for a specific role like manager or sales role. So this is a more technical view that um, you will see if you just think a little bit abstract here. So every layer is just stacked. So the top layer is the one that rules. And here you see that you can customize all of the metadata in Oracle IDF, including business components, including the controller, and most likely, you want to customize the user interface. Now, adaptive layouts, responsive layouts, they all could be implemented with customization. So you get a hint where to use MDS already. Now, the layers are kind of stacked. And if the layers have contradicting information, like one layer is adding a list of value, another layer is removing it, and the next is adding it back, then the rule is that the top layer wins. So that means that if the top layer says that the list of value is in, it will be in. Now, this is a technical view. And if we look at the runtime view, it's more beautiful here because the user can tell what is the base application and what is added or removed through customization. They can only tell if you give them additional privileges or the opportunity to run the application as someone else. So they wouldn't see that. And even from a performance perspective, they shouldn't even recognize that this is a customizable or customized application. So how to do it? Now we're getting into uh, the details on how to develop customizable applications. Well, I don't know if you recognize, but when you start JDeveloper, there's this fancy dialogue coming up asking you which role you want to be in. And I think out of reflex, we all hit the Studio, the give me all I can eat role, in which case JDOPA comes up with everything enabled. But there are other roles beside of database in Java developer role. There's a customization developer role. Now what this does is that it starts JDeveloper and you will see it exactly as you know it from developing the base application. The only difference is that all files that are not metadata files are locked. And only those files and those projects are ready for edi uh, editing that you configured with customization enabled, which you do on the project. So you go to the view controller project, double click on it, go to ADF view, and then you check the checkbox, enable seeded customization with MDS. Now for those projects, they show editable. Now, if you double click on a JSPX file or a JSF file, it opens in the visual editor and you can just perform changes in there. And all of the changes will be written into a metadata file, into an XML file, which is a separate file that later on will be deployed with the application. So no Java objects are customizable because they're not metadata. Keep that in mind. Beside of that, everything that is metadata can be customized and it be customized 
for the individual layers, for the individual um, customization uh, objects that you create. There's a little bit of setup to do, but that is well documented. So you want to have a look at the uh, Fusion developer guide for that and how to do it. And then in this customization developer view that JDFR starts and you can select the layer and then you apply the changes to the layer. So I mentioned already the deployment. Now the deployment is in a specific archive, which is called the metadata archive file. And this metadata archive file will be added to the ear file. And with the deployment of the application, there's a listener on the WebLogic server that will deploy the metadata archive file to the configured MDS repository. We talk about MDS repositories in the next recording, so don't worry, that will be covered in more detail here. Anyway, the metadata service repository is not only used with ADF application, it's also used with SOA Composites, and it's also used with Oracle Web Center. So these three products are customers to the metadata service repository and they use metadata archive files as well. Further readings, um, I put together a little list of documents that you may want to read, that you want to follow up with. Well, typically if you just Google for the title of the documents and that should help. Otherwise, have a look at the URL and follow up with that. There's one white paper that explains how you can uh, programmatically persist personalization going beyond the application changes and of course it handles CDIS customization. The next recording, and I stressed this already three or times, is about the infrastructure because there are questions to answer like now how many repositories for MDS do I need and how do I make sure that when I upgrade my application or upgrade my repository as well without conflicting the running application. Now this is all covered in the next session. See you there.